everything to do with our man's always been so positive since he retired here in 2018. He's bred full books the first three years, so that tells you the breeders have been really happy with the foals and everything that they've seen, and now we're really excited to be showing them off to buyers. You know, he was such a good racehorse. He won his first three starts, a stakes winner at two, went on to be champion three-year-old, won three group, group ones at three, but even that I think undersells him a little bit because he was the champion three-year-old, but he was the best horse in Europe. He was the highest rated horse. He beat every horse there was to beat in Europe that year and retired with a time form rating of 133. And I mean, to put that into perspective, you're talking about like winks, so you think. So that's the caliber of horse that has a time form rating at, at that level. Lot seven is a, is a lovely colt out of a black type mare. She's, her first foal's already got black type. It's one of the best pedigrees in the book. It's, it's a stallion's pedigree, and he's just a really striking colt. Our last one to go through is a half brother to Johnny Get Angry, who won the VRC Derby. So again, hopefully we'll finish on a high. And there's some lovely horses through the middle. We've got a couple of fillies um, out of Vanity Queen and Silver Blossom. They're out of lovely European families. They wouldn't look out of place in any catalogue, you know, in the best sales in Europe. So yeah, a lot to look forward to with him and, and some yeah, really nice types. He stood at Dali, um, you know, for two seasons and then came to Haunui in 2020 um, and he served a really nice book of mares, 78 mares, which was pretty good in his third season. He was a champion miler. We know that his sire, Ifraj, has crossed really well with a broad spectrum of New Zealand mares and I see the same thing happening with Ribchester. He's an unproven horse and they all stay that way until progeny hits the racetrack. But I think he adds everything that a New Zealand breeder will want and what we're seeing in his progeny is very exciting. What of his lots should we be looking out for? 103, all day long. If the colt's anything to go by, Wentwood have got a really nice filly. Um, I don't. Th he's left a more physical style of horse than probably Ifraj himself. Great temperamented horses, and we've been very lucky with the breeders that have used him in New Zealand have come back and supported him in, in the third year. He's a he's a good-looking horse. He's a fertile horse. We saw his um, a progeny up there in England. We were wrapped with what we saw, but we're even more tickled pink down here with the, the progeny down here. I, I love them. Um, the attractive foals and, and the comments, the feedback we've been getting from the agents has been enormous. You know, Dean Hawthorne, Bruce Perry, you know, they're two of the best judges in the business and they've both been very, very complimentary. So yeah, look, I'm excited about Cricket and I'm excited about Time Tees. The Aloha filly, I think she's the, the closest resemblance of Eloah's progeny like a mother. She's got a lot of the family traits and I love it a bit, so I'd love to keep her. One of the others we've seen today was the I'm a Lady. She's one of the fillies that um, a few of the agents have really made a lot of comment about. Um, more so the, you know, the fact that she's in book two. Um, they thought she was really book one quality, which is which is great. You know, you're much really better to be a bigger fish in, the, in a small pond, aren't you? She's a lovely walking filly. She's got grace about her, she's very feminine and got plenty of leg and um, it's one of the time test traits and uh, look, I, I like her a lot. They sell them as foals in Japan, as you probably know, up at the up at Northern Horse Park in Hokkaido. And um, his first crop went through last year and they were extremely well received. I mean, I know the numbers are slightly different, but they en ended up averaging around 700,000 New Zealand, which put them right up with the top fair season size in Japan and there was a lot of comment on them up there how the quality and athleticism and um, you know so that's continued on down here he's a, he's a lovely elegant horse himself and very much an athlete and he and he seems to have put that into his stock and yeah there's a lot of good talk around from the, the people that have been to look at the horses on the farm. Early in the sale we've got uh, lot 18 a, a colt out of a Zabel mare called Lady Gaga uh, he's quite a late foal but you wouldn't think so looking at him, he's an extremely strong, good walking horse and the other colt we've got out of Miss Christel, that great you know, Miss Jessie J, G.I. Jane family that's, that's so fast and has done so well, he's a, he's a lovely colt. Also a colt out of uh, Mare Court in the Spotlight that's you know, a very current pedigree and he's a very much a quality animal with plenty of presence so you know, but the whole draft of Satono's um, 
you know, they've created a really good impression. And out of those New Zealand-based first season sides, don't forget about uh, War Decree, of course, Darren, and also uh, What's the Story, while well, representing uh, the New Zealand breads. Let's have a little look at the breakdown of the first season sides, uh, both New Zealand-based and international. Al Manzor, of course, at the top of the list, 48 in book one, two in book two, best represented, Satono Aladdin, standing at ritual stud in behind him with nine and 15. And uh, as you can see, plenty of quality throughout our first season size. Wanted to take a little more of an in-depth look at uh, some of those first season size and I thought I'd call on you two to give us a little bit more insight. Uh, Michael, we'll start with you, Al Manzor. I think everybody's looking forward to seeing what happens here as Emily. He, he could be not just a massive force at this sale uh, with 48 in book one, but a massive force in this industry heading forward. We know he was a great racehorse, everybody knows that. He profiles well for what we tend to sell best which is those horses who are going to be competitive in Guineas races and both here in Australia. But the support of the broodmare owners around him, including of course Cambridge Stub where he stands, has been massive. When you go through this catalogue and get to an El Manzor, almost certainly the mare underneath has black type herself, she's left a black type winner, or she is a sister to a black type winner. I can't remember in the last five or ten years since I've been really paying attention to the Karaka sales and buying horses myself a first season stallion with this depth of broodmare help. So um, there's no certainties in racing, we know that, but everybody will be jaw dropped if he is not a success at the sale and a success at stud. Below him comes uh, Satono Aladdin, who is a global um, superstar son of Deep Impact. We know the impression that he's made internationally. Uh, Satono Aladdin was also the winner of Japan's highest rated mile, the Group 1 Yasuda Kinnan, and himself a $1.7 million fold purchase. Just shows the quality of his progeny. Move along to War Decree, Danny is the next one. Yeah, he's by um, Warfront, who's making a huge impact with his sons at stud throughout the world. Um, from a street cry mare, and second dam is, uh, is a great ticker, ta ticker tape who uh, raced in America um, at the highest level for a, a number of years. Um, you know, he, he was a Group 2 winner at 2, he trained on at 3 and 4. Um, you know, it, we've, we've been around and we've seen all the progeny of the first season sires, and you know, El Manzor will take a lot of the um, a lot of the focus, but this is a horse that I've got a lot of time for. He's leaving a really, really good looking yearling. And Michael, back to you with time test. Yeah, good to see Dabawi blood coming into New Zealand. Obviously, he's one of the iconic stallions uh, in the world. Uh, a lot of the agents and trainers I've spoken to really like them, bit of leg underneath them. They're quite athletic horses. He was a winner himself from 1,400 up to 2,100. So, again, that profiles nicely for what New Zealand horses and New Zealand sales trend, uh, tend to try and do. His dam won a group one as a two-year-old, so there's some potential there they'll run early. But, yeah, look, there's lots to like about him. And when you have those horses come out from Europe, you do have... Sometimes, with some horses, a slight concern about whether they'll also operate on the firmer ground here, but he holds the track record for 2,000 metres at Ascot, so he's a horse who can clearly operate on more New Zealand and Australian-like conditions. Ribchester, who's just joined Hanui Farm Stallion ranks, he's done one season with Hanui Farm and spent previous two, of course, in Australia, a great addition. A champion European miler at three and four, four Group 1 wins at the mile, Ifraj's best son and also a Royal Ascot record setter, and he shuttles between Dali and New Zealand. And if the colt I saw at Hanui Farm is anything to go by, he looks like he's got some great progeny on the ground. Danny, we come to you next. Uh, Darren, also a first season son. Yeah, standing there at Grange William, he's a barn mate to Zed. Um, he's an out and out speed horse um, and competitive in, in the most, um, the, the highest rated sprints in Australia. He was a, a Group 2 winner over 1,200 metres um, by Hinch and Brook, who's no longer there in the Hunter Valley um, and comes from the family of Snippets and, and not a single doubt. So, a, a prolific, fast Australian family. And uh, out of his 20-odd starts, almost half of those were all in Group 1 races over the sprint distance. So, uh, form around Redzale, uh, beat Global Glamour, uh, beat him pending. Uh, he's, he's, a, he's a good ad addition for us. And Michael, to you, uh, what's the story? This is about as domestic as a horse can possibly be bred. Obviously, he's, he's by Savabeel. Um, out of a really strong CD family, that tall poppy, fun on the run type family, doesn't have a lot of representation. Ran second in the derby at Ellerslie, was unlucky on that occasion. I think he's a horse who will chip in nicely at a different sort of market to some of those other first season stallions. 
Well, not just talking about first season size, but also the depth in New Zealand based size as a whole. Savabil, of course, uh, our flag bearer across uh, a number of years, and this year, no exception. 43 in the book one sale. Tavistock doing a marvelous job. Reliable man, Ifraj, as well, with 20 lots or more. There's a couple of horses uh, on that page, boys, that uh, really have come of age, I feel, and they're adding a lot, a lot of depth to that New Zealand uh, stallion rank. Yeah, look, I, I don't think we've been in this as strong a position for a while with where we're sitting in particularly the Australian size premierships. Um, there's, we, had, we finished the season last season with um, at least five of our local stallions in the, in the top 30. Um, in Hong Kong, we had five in the top 20. Uh, so we're, we're, in, uh, we're in really good shape from side representation. And, um, you know, Savabil, I, I read today on the Waikato Start website, he's, he's got more stakes winners in the current season than any stallion that started in Australasia. Wow, that's a remarkable achievement. So we've also pretty well represented on an international level as well. Let's have a look at some of those international sires in book one of our catalogue. Ten or more lots for So You Think. A Stern, No Nay Never, Piero, Pride of Dubai, Rubik, American Pharaoh. The list goes on and on, Michael. And uh, wow, we're very privileged, not just New Zealand based, but internationally to have these fantastic names. Yeah, two things. With, with the first season stallions, the ones who are coming internationally, there's a lot of speed. And I think it's a lot easier to buy or sell a horse if you can crack a million it. People say, I'm like KM, this horse. And they're happy to go with first season speed stallions we're getting from Australia for that. Um, I think out of all the stallions you mentioned, yes, wonderful blood there, but, but Piero's the one who's going to have a massive sale. Piero has got some really strong mares in the start. He doesn't have huge numbers. He's going to be really well represented. He had the top lot last year at 900,000. I wouldn't be surprised if he's the top averaged stallion by the time we get through book one. Yeah, he's uh, an incredible horse, isn't he? And uh, so sort of, um, I don't know what the word is, but... Um, he just covers all bases. Versatile. Derby, versatile. versatile Derby yeah. winners, sprinters. He, he can do it all, can't he? Phillies, Colts, you know, the whole lot. And also Australasian wide spread of them for, for the Australasian market. We've got top horses in WA and top horses in New Zealand. People have paid big money for Piero for the last couple of years, Danny, and you can see why. Yeah, I mean, he was a superstar on the track for Gay Waterhouse, and uh, he's, he's been a prolific sire already. And look, just another note there, I mean, there's um, So You Think, Kermit Eck, and done deal. I mean, these are stallions that are really flying in the Hunter Valley that all ca ca carry the New Zealand suffix and um, Karak is a good place to come and find, you, find yourself a, a cult to go to start eventually too. Yeah, it sure is and that's uh, clear to see from the results that you get year in and year out. Alright, we're going to get you off to a break and on the back of that we talk to some of the vendors about their highlight lots and also their drafts.